Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I came across a very small clip of Vivek Ramaswamy who went on The Breakfast Club last week. And I already knew this was gonna be a good video. I only saw literally like 30 seconds of the clip and I was like, let me stop. Let me watch the full clip and react to it on my channel because I already know that Vivek is going to be dropping truth bombs left, right, and center. And I gotta react to this. Especially because he's gonna be directly responding to questions about affirmative action and his perspective on the whole Supreme Court case. It's gonna be good. So, without further ado, let's get into this reaction video. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne, the guy we are the Breakfast Club. Tesman Figaro is with us this morning. I can't wait to see you attempt this name. And we got a special guest in the building, <laughs> Vivek Ramaswamy. Okay, great. Let's go. Um, so you mentioned, uh, you know, the pride of being American and how important it is uh, to have pride in this country. I'm also a veteran, uh, by the way, uh, for you. the United States Air Force. So when is it that you voted for the first time? I voted in 2020. Okay, so you're how old again? I'm 37 years old. So for how many years you sat around and did not get involved at all in any civic engagement? Is that my understanding? A long time is the answer. And actually, I wrote, and that's what I wrote this book about. I am, I'm not holding myself out as some sort of model. I'm actually offering myself as a self-reflection of my journey as a citizen, to whom this country has given much, right? As an adult, when you have kids, it changes your perspectives. I'm very honest about that. Is it just me or does it feel like she's trying to create a gotcha moment? with Vivek, you know, like, oh, well, you didn't do this. The problem with this, I guess, presentation of her opening questions is that Vivek is very, very transparent. So you're not really gonna have a gotcha moment with him because he's already revealed everything about himself, which is why people find him so appealing when it comes to the national discussion regarding him. It's why he's in third place right now behind Donald Trump and Governor DeSantis. And he's above a lot of other people who have been seasoned politicians for a very, very long time time. So I don't know. I just feel like she's trying to shame him by opening up and saying, you haven't done anything. You just sat around doing nothing. Guess what? A lot of Americans have not voted in a very, very long time because they were not motivated to vote and did not have a reason to vote. I think that actually makes him more appealing that he reveals that, that he addresses that because a lot of people can relate to his position and why he hasn't voted in such a long time. And it's like, instead of shaming a person, how about get to the root of the issue as to why they weren't voting and have that discussion versus you you sat around and you didn't do nothing. There are ways to serve this country than just merely voting. And I feel like he's done far more as far as the national discussion is concerned than a person who votes every single four years for the past 20 years. I'm just saying. So you've been sitting around in the country that my ancestors built for about 20 years. Uh, your parents came over as immigrants brought you over. You made millions, according to your uh, resume, off of this country. And you have absolutely not been involved in civics, one, not voting. And two, let me just ask, because I know you mentioned earlier, you don't want to sit around at the debate and talk about accomplishments. Let's make the accomplishments pretty simple. In high school, were you ever a class president or take any leadership role? Because your opponent did, Chris Christie. He was the class president. So yeah, have you ever taken I, any I, leadership at all on anything? I have, or just... can, can I just correct a couple factual things uh, sure. that are kind of important? My parents didn't bring me over to the country. I was okay, born in this country, and I'm proud no, of that. No, that's, I know you were born here in Ohio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ohio. You mentioned my parents I'm saying your parents me. were immigrants. Said, my they, apologies. Yeah, that's all right. You said your parents brought you over to this country. I yeah, thought my it was apologies. That record straight. I mean, they were immigrants, but let's they not go immigrants. down to Waterloo. Oh, no, 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 we're not going to Waterloo. I just want to correct a couple facts. And then the other thing you is... You were born here in Ohio. Okay, so if her job is to create an inviting atmosphere for Vivac to want to speak and be open, she's failing miserably at that right now because her tone and the way that she's framing these questions, in my opinion, is just so... <laughs> It's just so combative. It's like, why? Like, why are you so angry, girl? Relax. Calm down. Breathe. He's here trying to answer your questions and you're framing them in such a combative way that it almost feels like he's on the witness stand and she's like badgering him as a lawyer trying to get the truth out of him. It makes no sense. Calm down. Breathe. I don't know who pissed in your Wheaties, but relax. First of all, even her opening question, so you've been living in this country that my ancestors built and you didn't do anything? <laughs> that alone says a lot about her perspective on things. So yes, African Americans 110% were pivotal in the growth and the building of this country. But African Americans did not build this country by themselves. It was a collective effort from many different people of many different ethnicities and races. And many of those people were not slave owners. Let's just put that out there right now. And I think she is, I don't know, for some reason making this personal. I don't understand why, but it's very uncomfortable to watch as a viewer. That's number one. Number two, if you're going to ask questions of a person and you are playing the role of an interviewer, then it is your job to have your facts straight before asking the questions. And the fact that she said that his parents brought him over here implies that he was an immigrant. And that's not the case. He was born in this country. He is a born American citizen. And that's a pivotal fact. And so when he corrects her and she responds with, well, let's not go down the water, home. In other words, don't worry about that. I made a mistake. Big deal. 
no, I'm going to correct you because you're wrong. You're firing these questions at me in a very aggressive manner for no reason. And I reserve the right to clarify things before I answer your questions because your framing is incorrect. And that's a fault on you as an interviewer. That's journalism 101. Before you ask a question, make sure you have the facts correct. Otherwise, you look stupid. I was, born, I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. That's right. Right. So yeah. you've been here your entire life. So the question that's is, right. did you take any leadership role in middle school, high school, class, president? I did. I know yeah. you played tennis. What, what is it? Explain it to Student us. council. But you know, I think that this is the, yes, I have, I have held leadership roles over my life, but those don't qualify me to do what I'm doing now. No, That's it kind of does. Okay, well, it kind of does. Well, let me, well, I'm giving the test. I'm the test okay, administrator. All right, there you go. So it kind of does, because when you go from saying, I want to go to the highest office. I'll tell you, I've led companies as well, is the other leader. Right, well, the main leadership right, but, role I played is, is and, and I want to talk about one early part of your premise that I also want to say, mm -hmm. bring it to the country point. The other point, you use the word sitting around. You know, I, I'm not somebody who say it. I've, I, I want the next generation, my kids' generation, to have more civic duties when they graduate from high school and college than I did when I did. That being said, I wasn't sitting around. I've developed medicines, five of which are FDA-approved products today, one of which is a life-saving therapy in kids, 20 of whom die by the age of three if they're not treated, 70% of whom now live lives of a normal duration, another one for prostate cancer. So I, I don't apologize well, for making sorry. contributions. But right, well, I don't want you to filibuster yeah. that no um, because Just that's not the question there. that I asked. <laughs> that may not be the question that you asked, but look how you framed the question. In regards to him not voting, you said he was sitting around. So that implies that he was doing nothing with his life while not voting. And his point, which is a very valid one in my opinion, is yeah, I may not have been voting in general elections, but while I wasn't voting, I was trying to find a cure for things like, I don't know, cancer? which is far more than most Americans are doing. I would argue that his contributions to our society are far greater than any person who just votes every four years. And by the way, it's not filibustering, it's correcting you because once again, you frame the question that way and he regards the right to answer the questions and to clarify your framing. And I don't consider as a veteran, I'm talking about service. I'm not talking about what you Civic did for service, profit. Yeah. I'm not talking about what you what you pay people to do with yeah. your company. So I'm, I'm not, not talking about I'm that. Not the country. Because that means nothing to me. You do, you do what I'm talking about, she hasn't been able to ask a question. She's been trying to ask a question, yeah. and she, you've been talking over her. I'm all ears. We, we gave you the platform to let you say it. I'm all ears. 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 i am all first question and then he also clarified because the framing of her question was BS. That's what he did and that's what he as a person whose life she is questioning he has a right to do. He's answering her questions and he's also clarifying and that is his right and anybody would be a little bit defensive when you are setting up the question with the terms you sat around doing nothing. He's clarifying that he wasn't just doing nothing. This is what I was doing. This is what I've been doing and again trying to find a cure for cancer is extremely admirable and yes serving the country is all also admirable, but you can serve the country in different ways. And the fact that she's trying to imply that, well, I'm talking about service in the military. That's all that I care about. Well, again, there are other ways to serve the country other than just serving in the military as a citizen. And that's all that he was trying to clarify. So your question, so my question again is, you're trying to, your your goal is to raise the standard and you're saying you want people to believe in country and you want people to have civic engagement. And sir, I just find it very telling that you haven't had any civic engagement at all and haven't been at all. And when I say sit around, I don't mean you haven't done anything. I'm talking about in regards to service because one thing about political office, the same way that you want to change how people look at uh, politics and look at this country, I want to change how people look at politicians. And when I see that someone hasn't did anything at all, to be of service to mankind, to take a leadership role. It's not good enough to just be on Civic City uh, Student Council where you're a leader. All of that applies. Have you been able to get anybody in the room at any time from the high school gymnasium to Ohio uh, Republican leadership there to now? Have you been able to get anybody in the room to believe in this vision? I don't agree with a lot of your vision statement, but I do know you've been going around having these discussions and getting everybody emotionally worked up to talk about vision and debate, but I want to get to the practical. You're trying to go from preschool to, to president of the United States. You're skipping over city council, county council, mayor, governor. You want to Go straight to the top. So my question is this a PR? Is this the PR, the perception of reality? Or have you, can you point to any leadership where you've been able to get people to believe in what you're talking about that they're not paid to do? on any of these vision statements that you have. It's funny, I wonder if she had the same energy for President Barack Obama when he ran for president in 2008 because the main criticism from everyone was that he did not have enough experience and people were calling him merely a community organizer. Now granted, he did serve in the Senate from 2005 until 2008 when he ran for president. And I believe before that he served locally for Illinois from 1997 until 2004. So he did do some service, but compared to majority of 
career politicians, he was virtually considered a baby in the business and he got a lot of flack for that. So I'm just wondering if her energy was different for Barack Obama because she politically agreed with him versus Vivek, who she does not politically agree with. And again, she keeps saying service. I care about this particular service for mankind to help people. He was trying to find a cure for cancer. If that's not helping mankind, I don't know what is. So if you're only going to count government service, you're absolutely right. No, not government right. service. Okay. Student council in the eighth grade, ninth grade. Tip. Were you yeah. a leader? Did you did you do anything to rally anybody? Did you fight for better lunch? I did in the sixth grade with Miss Harris. <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking about government. I can go all the way back from the fifth grade every every year, sir, because people who are in service to this country, mm -hmm. if you're going to go around saying you want people to believe in this country that I signed up to mm -hmm. die for, then I want to make sure that you're holding that same standard. So not government, not political. Let's not get it confused. Yeah. I'm saying, have you did anything of service that we can point to and say, he is a good leader? So. I, the acts of service that I have performed are small, so small that I don't even want to talk about them to boast. But yes, have I volunteered for this country? Yes, I have. I've always so been like, interested well, let's in healthcare. Talk about it. It's okay to Bethesda talk about North, small things. I mean, I it, these are small things, right? But thank you. For, oh, well, just, yeah, let's just mention Bethesda really, North Hospital. Really a no? No, it's not a no. It's just something I don't like boasting about. I, I well, we're not boasting. We're yeah, just an interview. You're boasting on your vision Directly. and everything Look, else. I think you boasted on the millions of dollars that you made. So let's just throw it out. So in sixth grade, I'll give you an example. I'll help you out. In sixth grade, Miss Harris, Miss Harris was slapped. Let me give you an example because maybe you're confused. What were they just complaining because he supposedly wasn't answering any of her questions, and now here he is trying to clarify and answer her questions, and she, as well as the co-hosts, are cutting him off so that she can continue to speak over him to tell him about her service in the sixth grade. And I'm sorry, but if he were a liberal Democrat, there's no way in hell they would be talking to him like this or treating him like this. He's a far better person than me because I would have walked out of this ratchet interview a long time ago. And then she mentions, condescendingly so, oh, you were boasting about your million dollars. He wasn't boasting about making a million dollars. He was talking about how he is an entrepreneur in this country and he was able to succeed in this country while doing service, by the way. But okay, bitter Betty, let's carry on. I've always been drawn to healthcare. That's why I ended up founding companies in that space. When I was in high school, part of what drew me into it was that I was a volunteer at a local hospital. I actually mm -hmm. became the leader of that group of volunteers that actually discharged women who had recently given birth. That was it. Nothing to do it. Stand, did you do anything we can point to to stand but, out? But I, want, but I want to say something about that because I say that in the book. If I'm being really honest, why did I do that in high school? A part of the motivation, I'll be just brutally honest with you, was... Part of the motivation was that's actually what allows you to get into a good college when you graduate. Right, you so, it was about, so it was about you. So, so it was about self. So there's a, that, and I'm admitting that in a way that very few other people do, but I got to be honest about it. That was a big part of why I did it. Yeah, you know, it was about self, and I'm going to be honest, and, and, and I'm going to give it back to the yeah, guys. I'm going to be honest about it with you. Yep. Leadership is not about self. I agree so with you on that. I what, I just on heard, that. what I just heard is that everything is about you, and to be honest with you, this is just a PR campaign, sir, to be honest with you, and I think you're, moving, you're trying to go further to the right because you want the Republicans to accept you as a, as a man of color, and I think the only way you think you can do that is to be so extreme I, I appreciate uh, with, your your, with your positions, and I think you need to do a little bit more work in, in service. I'll give yeah, it back to I'll, the guys. Let me, let me let the test, Because she didn't ask me a question, and then and then you guys said you wanted to hear a response, but I think I heard an expression of opinion. So just make sure you're all done before I respond to it. No, just wanted to say that even then, I would still want you to point out, even at the yeah. hospital, something that you did that, that made you stand out on when actually taking the leadership role. But you, you already answered it. You said you did it because it was a motivation to get in college. Exactly. Which means and it was I'm about very you. honest about that. But I, but Everything's I, about, so everything has been about you. Oh my God. How dare he make a decision for his future? How dare he? How dare he? How dare he have self-motivation and self-interest in the moves that he made? As if you can't do both. As if you can't help society and serve society and also have self-interest involved in that action. How dare he secure his future. How dare he? This is just ridiculous. I can't even take this interview seriously. It is embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for her. And again, she just proved that her whole purpose for her questions was self-serving. It was to try and do a gotcha on him. And it was about trying to make a point. It had nothing to do with her actually caring about what he had to say in any way, shape, or form. It was about her own agenda. And she failed miserably. Miserably. In my opinion, Vivek is way too smart to even be sitting in that room. But they're lucky enough that he is gracing them with his presence because hopefully he's going to be dropping more truth bombs on their little victimhood heads. Let's keep watching. I, it, it, once, I want to be respectful. I want to make sure you got everything you wanted to on the table before yeah. I before but I, I respond. If, if this was just us, we could be a lot You guys table. tell me. I'm, I'm the guest on your show. You tell me when, when I'm good to speak. Go ahead. Go ahead. You sure? Mm -hmm. You sure about that? If we're, if we're good. Yeah, we sure. So I think there's a different worldview that we have. And I think the worldview is how one actually makes contributions in a country. I do not believe that there's a separate category of just if you're serving the country and then if you're acting in self-interest, that that's somehow sinful or wrong. I reject that vision. To the contrary, I think capitalism is the best system known to man to lift people up from poverty. I deeply respect, and I thank you for your service to this country. I'm grateful for it. I haven't served the country in the way that you have. 
But I think that the way you get ahead in capitalism, how did I develop a multi-billion dollar biotech company? It was by developing medicines that save people's lives. I say capitalism causes problems. Yeah, I disagree with that. I disagree with that. I think that capitalism demands that you provide something to someone that helps them more than you're actually charging them for it. That's the only way. That's a business model, sir. That's not service. It's a business model. It's not service. I'm saying it's having an impact on society. As an elected official, it's service. That's the disconnect that you're using today to teach you. Now I'm moving on to there are phases of our lives where we do different things. Well, I've you're been, moving straight all the way up to President of the United States. You know, I don't Let's view it as a hierarchy. First. I don't view it as a hierarchy. I don't believe in hierarchies. The hierarchy well, is the way the bureaucracy the works. I don't believe in hierarchies. So we have a difference I know, of opinion. You also don't believe in service, and that's where we're having a disconnect. Well, I disagree okay. with you on that. Please, sir, yep. sir, excuse me, because this is important. We have to pause it. But this is not a Respectfully, you said you were done with your questions, and you gave it back to Charlemagne and Envy, which means shut the hell up and let him talk. You don't, here's my vision of the run for presidency. This is why I say I'm an open book, is my job is to make sure people in this country know who I am and what I stand for. And I think that no, very few politicians on either party actually get that job done. So what I say is, I'm an open book about who I am and what I stand for. Whether the people of this country want to vote for me, that's their question, not mine. That's their job to determine, not mine. And you're free not to vote for me. I expect you won't, and that's okay. But I'm doing my job in this, in the three books I've written over the last year, in the conversation I'm having with you guys, being far more honest than any politician that I know in the last 10 years in this country. And I think when I say we want to fix corruption, you don't know what the first step is. The first step is actually people being honest. So you guys know me. You know what I stand for. I haven't hit back on that. Whether the people in this country want to vote for it, that's their choice. Do you want to unite the country? I do want to unite the country. So why is like one of your marquee campaign proposals making sure black people can no longer benefit from affirmative action? See, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's actually been a disastrous experiment over the last 60 years. I've seen the impact that it's had. Unlike a lot of other executives, I've had senior executives in my company who happen to be black. Senior executives in my campaign who happen Mm -hmm. to be black. I actually went to a majority or close to majority black school first through eighth grade. There isn't a single one of those black kids or black colleagues that could not have achieved everything I have in my life. I firmly believe that to be true. And I have seen the unfair discrimination behind closed doors, the thing that people will say behind closed doors, about somebody who would have had that position anyway, but was unfairly tarred with the taint of saying they got it because of a race-based quota system. I think that's unjust to everyone across the board. And I think the right way to do this is actually ensure equality of opportunity, educational access at an early age, which by the way, we don't have in this country starting at an actual young age. How about doing that in a way that's agnostic to race? Boom, drop the mic. (laughs) This is why I rock with Vivek so much because he's speaking truth. He is speaking truth. And this is why, by the way, that bitter Betty woman doesn't like him because Vivek is a person of color, yet he is not playing the victimhood card that she wants him to play. That's why she mentioned him being some tool for Republicans or that he's only reaching out to the far right as a person of color in order to gain points. No, he actually believes in what he stands on and how sad for that woman that in her jaded mind, she can't believe that anybody who is not white would have conservative views and have a conservative perspective. That to me is slavery in the mind. She is still on the plantation in her mind, which is why she can't envision anyone of color not voting Democrat and liberal and still being on the Democrat plantation. That's all you. Have fun. Vivek and myself and many other people have been red-pilled and we are never going back. And what he said about affirmative action is 1000% correct. It should be about merit and about the actual work of a person versus a quota. I don't want to get paid and I don't want to have a position solely because I fit a quota for the company. No, thank you. I want the most qualified person in that position. If I'm having heart surgery, I don't want the doctor who got the job because he happened to be a certain color. I want the doctor who worked his ass off and who knows what he's doing. Thank you. So my view is I think my approach is actually going to be more successful in lifting up more black Americans than have been the Lyndon Johnson approach of actually using race-based quota systems. So if the Supreme Court does rule on uh, affirmative action and they do ban it, who do you feel it benefits versus who it hurts? I think that it helps everyone if they end race-based affirmative action in college admissions. I think it will literally help everyone in different ways because it restores merit in the United States. Are we perfect in ensuring equality of opportunity? No, we're not. The fact that kids are trapped by the zip code in which they're born, determining where they go to school is a problem, which is why I favor universal school choice in this country, which has actually done more to help black Americans than has any affirmative action program. I think that most people who benefit from affirmative action are the immigrants who came after Kennedy's immigration reform in the 60s. They are not descendants of slaves. They are people who came as immigrants like my parents did. Mm -hmm. And so I just think it is a broken system to say that you look like someone to whom a bad thing once happened and you're going to be favored over someone who looks like someone who once did a bad thing. Your parents would have gotten the same shot without that legislation? I, I mean, so it turns out that Asian Americans and Indian Americans like don't you benefit from... They benefited your parents, which directly benefited you. See, here's what I'm saying is whether or not it's in our past, the question is 
how do we actually move forward as one nation? And I do not believe it is with race-based quotas. I believe I, it is I, economically I, I empowering all Americans. And I think yes. that legislation was put here to protect people that look like me, people that look like you. And I think you're ridiculous to want to get rid of it. Here's what I would say is Lyndon Johnson's great society that this was part of, right? So, so affirmative action was part of it. There was a broader set of policies designed to help black Americans. I think have been disastrous for black Americans and all Americans. We gotta get real. My, my grandparents lived, they were colon, they lived in a colonial society. Britain colonized where my grandparents lived as well. But I think that I don't do well by seeing myself as a victim of the white man because actually Great Britain happened to have colonized where my grandparents were colonized. I, I, I think you don't think so. That's moving to go. I think you were colonized. What benefited your parents when they got here? That's right. What benefited, what benefited all of us is the fact that we have a free country where no, anybody is free to parents? achieve what they want. What be, I don't know what benefited. They came to this country with not a lot of money. What benefited them was hard work and dedication. My dad faced layoffs when he was growing up at GE. Right. He went to law school at night to be able to keep his job. What did that teach you? Me? Affirmative action right. benefited him? I don't think affirmative action benefited him. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. I think hard work and dedication benefited him. <laughs> they want so bad. So bad for Vivek to co-sign their victimhood mentality and for Vivek to, I guess, concede that yes, affirmative action is the only reason why I was successful and affirmative action is the only reason why my parents who were hard workers were able to succeed in this country. They just can't get past that wall I guess in their own minds and seeing somebody who is successful like Vivek who is a person of color like Vivek who does not buy into the systemic oppression Olympics that they play into blows their mind and that's why I say it's sad and they're still on that plantation because they need that victimhood mentality to coexist in this country to make excuses for themselves in this country as to why they didn't get to whatever level they felt they should have been at as opposed to any other factors everything is about race everything is about victimhood everything is about oppression thankfully for Vivek he does not fall into that mentality and what he's offering is something different something that their little pea-sized brains cannot comprehend which is why they are so bothered by his presence I got to give it up to my boy because he handled them with class with facts and with assertion and i'm proud of him because if it was me <laughs> let's just say thank god i am not a politician and thank god i am not in that position because i don't know if i would have been as classy as he was during this interview of attacks because that's what this entire interview was it was one woman attacking him left right and center and two men co-signing her attacks and in my opinion all three of them were the three stooges. They didn't know what the heck was going on. They couldn't comprehend or understand his level of intellect, which is why they kept going to the basic denominator of everything, which is just race. And then attacking him for being an ambitious person and being able to capitalize on the abilities that he has. Because capitalism <laughs> apparently is evil. Right. This interview was very difficult to get through. I watched it for you guys. If you want to see the full interview, I will have a link in my description where you can go and watch the actual interview without my analysis. But bear in mind, it's going to be rough. So get you some Starbucks and good luck. I'm going to end the video here because I'm exhausted. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this content, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit my notification bell so you know when I post a brand new video. I'm trying to post at least one to two times a week. So let's keep grinding together. If you want to follow me on my other social media platforms, I am also available on TikTok as well as Instagram under Curly Boy Chuck. I do try to answer my DMs. I won't lie though. I do have a lot of DMs that I have not answered because there's just so many, but I promise you I am trying to get through them. If you guys want to donate to my channel and help me continue continue to do these videos i will have a link in my description with my paypal as well as my cash app all money will be going back into this channel to grow this channel and to continue doing what i'm doing hopefully one day full time until next time peace